Hi, it's the middle of November and time for a wrap up and my first half of November has gone a lot better than the whole of my October so far. Seven books read and two of them were, in my opinion, five stars. Um, I had net galleys, net galley arcs. I've had a book that was lent to me by a friend and I read um, three from the Goldsmiths Prize shortlist. So that was what my reading part, my, my reading was so far. Right, I started off with The Silence Project by Carol Haley, uh, which comes out in February next year, the 9th of February. And this is a, a dystopian one. And I thought it was absolutely terrific. This was one of my five stars. The opening, I've, I haven't come across a dramatic opening like this before. Um, Amelia watches as her mother burns herself to death. So that is the opening of your book. I mean, where do you go from there? And we've moved on now. So it's several years after um, Amelia's mother, Rachel, died. And Amelia has decided that she's going to write a book about her mother to talk about what her mother's beliefs were. Because this burning, it was a protest. Rachel had decided to be silent. She'd started this silence movement that because nobody was listening. She felt that nobody in power was listening to anybody. And so the idea is, you know, we're silent and we listen. And she needed to make a statement. And so there was the burning. And then this movement, the community, it moves off into different paths in Rachel's name. But as Amelia believes, it's not in Rachel's name. And she wants to write this book to show what her mother was like. And it's quite chilling. It really is chilling. And, ah, oh, I thought it was absolutely terrific. The second one I read was Seven Steeples by Sarah Baum. And this is, uh, this was on the Goldsmiths Prize shortlist. And this is a, such a gentle read. There's no actual plot in there, but that's, that's the point of it. It is just so gentle. It's about nature. It's about Belle and Sai who've moved away to this remote cottage that's near this mountain. And they're told that if they climb, climb this mountain, they will see seven stones, seven schools, seven steeples. And it's their life living in this remote cottage. Each chapter is a year. So you've got chapter one, the first year, chapter two, the second year. And each chapter is broken down so that chapter one looks at sort of January, February. Chapter two looks at what happens in nature for the next months until you get to this, um, chapter seven when you are in sort of November, December. So it is a beautiful exploration of nature. Such a gentle book. And at the same time as nature, it's balanced size, almost deterioration as they cut themselves off from the world. Lovely. The third one was also off the Goldsmiths Prize list, and this was Somebody Loves You by Mona Arshi. And this is about Ruby, a British Indian girl who stops talking. And it's told in vignettes, uh, which are sort of almost chronological, but you do have sort of flitting backwards and forwards. And she gives you sharp portraits of family, of friends, and her mother's mental illness and it deals with racism, sexual abuse, there's slow emerging themes and you get a really good picture of her family and her friends. The next one was another thriller and this was the Net Galley arc that comes out in February next year, 9th of February again, What July Knew by Emily Cog and this deals with domestic and child abuse. So it is quite harrowing at times. July Hooper, she's a 10 year old and she lives with her dad, Mick, and her stepmom, Shelley, and her stepsister, Sylvie. And she knows nothing about her mum who died in a car accident when she was little. But she has collected all these facts about her, 
what she called ribbons about her mum, sort of the fact that she liked Jaffa cakes, things like that. Um, but nobody speaks about her mum, and she knows that if she asks her dad questions, she will get a beating, a lesson. But July accepts all these lessons because she knows her father loves her and wants her to be good. And so if he gives her a lesson, she just accepts it, which is a hard thing to read about. She's a lovely character. And the portrayal of this family that is held together by this controlling man is very, very cleverly written. And you are so, so angry with him. Um, it's a harrowing book, but it is a really good read. The next one was um, Garcia, sorry, Diego Garcia. And this was the winner of the Goldsmiths Prize this year. And this one is has, has as its background the 1973 deportation of a population from the Chagas Islands by the British government so that the US could build a military base there. It's something that I never knew anything about until I read this book. Um, you have Damaris and Oliver, who are both writers living in Edinburgh, and one day they meet Diego Garcia. Um, not his real name, he's named himself after this island because um, his mother was one of the ones that was deported. And they meet him, he disappears, and the book is almost about how do you write his story when it's not your story to tell. It's Because it's a Goldsmiths Prize winner, it's one that's creatively written, you've got parts of it in columns, you've got fictional interviews. It was, when you read about its formation, almost like performance art because chapters appeared here, there and everywhere on social media. Chapters were performed. So it's a very sort of immersive hybrid hybrid type of novel. Um, a really important message, I thought. That was um, a book that sort of almost stayed with me. The next one, uh, if you've followed my um, videos before, I've got this theory that a yellow book means it's heartwarming and lovely and warming and all that sort of stuff. It's a real feel-good book. And this Net Galley arc that comes out in February, 16th of February, is a yellow book. The Vintage Shop of Second Chances. And it's one of those books that makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. And we all need to feel warm and fuzzy at times. And Lou has lost her mum and she's grieving for her mum, but she decides to open up a vintage shop where she lives selling vintage clothes. And the pride of place goes to her mum's yellow dress. Um, Maggie is in her 70s and her husband's just divorced her. And she walks in the shop when she sees this yellow dress and her and Lou become really good friends. And in the USA, Donna, has just discovered in, the, in her 60s that she was adopted. And the only link to her mum is a photograph of a woman in a yellow dress. So it's a, a book about these three women meeting and second chances. And it's a really sort of warm story. And the final one was a book that was lent to me by, um, by a friend, The Last Girl to Die by Helen Fields. And this one is a thriller. It's quite a gruesome thriller. There's a, some gruesome bits in here. And um, it's the story of Sadie, who's a private investigator. She's from Canada, but she's hired by this family in on the Isle of Mull because their daughter's gone missing. And because this family are American and have recently moved to Mull, they don't feel that the police force is giving their daughter's disappearance a lot of credence. That, you know, she's an outsider, so why bother with her? So Sadie goes along and she finds her sort of symbolically, her body symbolically placed, and she realises that there's more to this than, than meets the eye. And she digs into the island's secrets. And 
there are some gruesome bits and there are twists that you didn't expect and the ending I did not expect the ending I did not see the ending coming and I felt as though I'd been punched it was a real shock and I've never read a thriller where the ending is such an emotional punch um absolutely terrific um that was the five my second five star so first book I read in November was a five star and the final one I've read for this half of the month is a five star as well um the book of my first half oh it's got to be one of the five stars and I think I'm going to go for the silence project the very first one because the dystopian and the fact that everything is so close we're almost a street away if you see what I mean um so that's it. I've had a really good first half of November. We'll see what the second half brings. So happy reading. Take care. Bye.